tonight. Don't miss our post-election edition. Get a recap from our powerful primetime team and reaction from special guests. It's a look back on Sunday Best. Then Scott's fate. Now the jury has the final say. As deliberations get underway, Geraldo brings us the latest on at large. Plus, covering the votes, the polls, the political battles, it's an inside look at Fox News headquarters on election night on Fox Magazine. Only one, only Fox News Channel. Coming up on the Beltway, boys, President Bush outlines his second term agenda. We'll run through his to-do list and preview the big battles ahead. Republicans increase their majorities in both the House and Senate, and Tom Daschle is sent packing. We'll run through the list of the campaign's big winners and losers. And life after Arafat will tell you what it means for the Mideast peace process. Get ready, the Beltway Boys are next right after the headlines. I'm Carol Ayavana. Yasser Arafat in very serious condition in the intensive care unit of a French hospital. One of his senior aides tells Fox Arafat is not in a coma but slips in and out of sleep. Israel says it's ready to bury Arafat in the Gaza Strip when he dies. Israel's defense minister said they'll make final preparations for the burial the moment they get a request from the Palestinian Authority. Israel said last week it wouldn't grant Arafat's last wish to be buried near the Al-Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem. Oh. Palestinian Prime Minister Ahmed Korea calling on militants to stop attacks inside Israel. Korea went to Gaza Saturday and met with leaders of 13 separate factions, including the terror groups Hamas and Islamic Jihad. He also met with members of Arafat's Fatah movement. The terrorist group Hamas called for unity among Palestinian groups, but rejected the appeal for a ceasefire against Israel. Iran says it's reached a preliminary deal over its nuclear program, though it's not clear what the de details of the deal are. The solution comes after two days of talks with British, German, and French officials in Paris. They told Iran it must stop enriching uranium by November 25th or risk UN sanctions. European and U.S. leaders fear Iran is trying to make nuclear weapons. An investigation is underway this morning trying to figure out why a British high-speed train smashed into a car and derailed. Eleven people are dead, dozens more are injured. The train driver was among those killed. There were 300 people on board the train when it crashed. Passengers said they felt a jolt and then the train flipped onto its side. It's not known why the car was on the tracks. Our next update is at the bottom of the hour. The Beltway Boys with Fred Barnes and Mark Kondracki starts right now, right here on Fox News Channel. over Americans are expecting a bipartisan effort and results. I'll reach out to everyone who shares our goals, and I'm eager to start the work ahead. I'm Mort Kondracki. And I'm Fred Barnes, and we're the Beltway Boys, and the hot story is the M word, which I obviously mean mandate, and in that three-point landslide that Bush won, I think he's got a, a, a mandate. And what is a mandate? A mandate is just uh, that you won by talking about certain issues, and you will pursue them afterwards. That's what he's going to do, and, and and that's what he said uh, just the, uh, on Thursday after the election. Watch. You asked, do I feel free? Let me put it to you this way. I earned capital in the campaign, political capital, and now I intend to spend it. It is my style. That's what happened in uh, uh, after the 2000 election. I earned some capital. Uh, I've earned capital in this election, and I'm going to spend it for, for what I... But I told the people I'd spend it on, which is, you've heard the agenda, Social Security and tax reform, uh, moving this economy forward, education, fighting and winning the war on terror. I think he's going to do it. He is a risk taker, and, uh, and he'll follow through on it. Now, I want to mention one other letter, R, <laughs> the R word. <laughs> yes. why, why, am I, why am I not surprised? <laughs> re re realignment, you know, uh, Republicans, the realigning election was in 1994, huge election where they won the House and the Senate, and they have kept that, but Bush has had two realigning elections, 2002 and this one, where they picked up seats in the Senate and the House, where they're now very strong, and they have a majority of the governorships, including Matt Blunt, Roy Blunt's son, getting elected in Missouri. They have a plurality of the state legislatures, and they've kept this durable 
uh, majority in the House and the Senate. So uh, uh, realignment more is real. Yeah. Well, I, it, this was this was a historic election. This is the first time that a president since 1936 has has picked up seats mm -hmm. in, in in two consecutive elections. That that's true. Yeah. But but the the Republicans do not rule the way the Democrats ruled from the 30s to the to the to the 60s. Yeah, you know? and I didn't claim they had. Well, okay, yeah. all right. I mean, it's it's as you say, parity plus. Yeah. It's not right. it's, it's not uh, dominant. Mm -hmm. But and it, this was a, a reasonably close election. Three mm -hmm. three million votes. Three uh, three percent. Now, um, on the on the issues of jobs and uh, and uh, the economy, Kerry uh, carried uh, the majority just as Bush did on the moral issues by about the same amount. And on Iraq, Kerry, the voters preferred Kerry. On terrorism, they pre preferred Bush. I think the difference was on these character issues. You mm -hmm. ask people on every single one of them, uh, who's a strong leader, uh, who, um, uh, who, who knows what he wants to do, who has a clear idea, uh, who's honest and trustworthy. On those, mm -hmm. on those questions, presidential leadership questions, uh, Bush went 70, 30, 80, 20. Right. And, and Bush, people want a leader, and Bush intends to lead. That's, that's what he, what, how he interprets this election. So let's take a look at what President Bush wants to get done in a second term. First on the agenda, Iraq and Afghanistan and other emerging democracies. Yeah, well, obviously the first thing is Fallujah. It looks like they're about to move there. It is the thing that has to be done prior to the election in January, so you can really to knock out that breeding ground and staging point for the terrorists. Uh, once that's done, and I think they'll be successful, uh, Iraq will move toward an election, and, and, and I think we're going to see next year tangible success uh, toward a democratic Iraq, a stable democratic Iraq. Well, but I hope so. Now, look, the, the question is, once the, the U.S. Marines and the Iraqis clean up this rat's nest of terrorists in mm -hmm. Fallujah, can the Iraqi military hold it? And will, will the Sunnis say, okay, it's over, we want these terrorists out of here, or they're going to keep up with resistance? Okay, item two, social security reform. Uh, I mean, this is a big test of the Democrats. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, younger workers really like the idea of social security mm -hmm. reform. They want to, they, they're used to 401ks. If the Democrats stick with the, with the old New Deal idea that you're not going to have private savings accounts, I think they're going to lose in the long run. Yeah, no, this is something Bush has campaigned on in two elections now, 2000 and 2004, uh, that he's going to push for him. You know, this small amount coming out of the employee side, not the employers. Uh, I think he's going to push for it. I, uh, I think he'll overcome the queasiness of some Republicans about it, uh, but I think he'll get it. He'll have to put it off a little bit into the future, so uh, uh, to be implemented to uh, find the transition money that's needed. Okay. Uh, item three, reforming the tax code. You know, there's only one way if you're going to reform the tax code. There, I mean, there's one thing you want to achieve, get all those special breaks out and simplify it. He says he wants to simplify it. There's only one way to achieve that, lower the tax rates, and then you can get all those... Uh, Loopholes out. Well, the, the Democrats like the idea of tax simplification in principle. Yeah. What they what they don't want is is a uh, is, is they don't want yeah, it to be more regressive. Want lower rates. No, no, they want well, they don't want it to be more <laughs> more regressive. Okay, next on the agenda, continuing to reform education. Yeah, well, that's uh, you know I think Bush made a big step in No Child Left Behind. He wants to protect the standards in that, which John Kerry and other uh, Democrats want to dilute and extend it to uh, secondary schools. Um, it's going to be tough. I don't think he'll have Teddy Kennedy with him this time. I, no, I, don't, I don't either. And the yeah. question for the Democrats on this one is, who do they who who do they put first? Do they put parents and kids first, or yeah. the teachers union? Yeah. <laughs> item item number five: energy reform. Well, uh, go ahead. Not, well, it's not exactly reform. I mean, the Bush bill is uh, it's got some subsidy for practically everybody in the entire energy industry, but it does do what Democrats don't want to do, and that's create. Uh, rather generate more oil and gas production. That's what we need. Now, I don't think Anwar is going to get through under any circumstances. <laughs> yeah. That is, it's almost an, a, a, an issue of religion with the with yeah. the Democrats. They're going to, they would filibuster that. Indeed. Okay. Uh, and uh, finally, on uh, Bush's agenda for now, tort reform. You know, that is one that Bush he achieved some of that in Texas, and he wants to do it. And uh, uh, look, the trial lawyers get more money than the Democratic Party than anybody else. And uh, once again, even with 55 senators, I don't think they can push it across, even in the medical malpractice area. You know why? Why? Because there are there are a number of Republicans oh, are. who are lawyer friendly. Yeah. And you know, yeah. I, you know, Bush has got to really have to fight on this. Yeah. What do you want? Do you want your OBGYNs and and emergency rooms mm -hmm. to close, mm -hmm. or do you want uh, and and drug companies to go out of business, or, do, or you know, or do you want to uh, do do what trial lawyers want? Uh, now the other hot story is after Arafat. Now. Uh, as uh, as uh, Arafat lay dying in in, in Paris, mm -hmm. uh, Bush got a nudge from Tony Blair uh, on the media's peace process. Watch this. I have long argued 
that the need to revitalize the Middle East peace process is the single most pressing political challenge in our world today. I agree with him that the Middle East peace is a very important part of a peaceful world. I think it's very important for our friends, the Israelis, to have a peaceful Palestinian state uh, living on their border. It's very important for the Palestinian people to have a peaceful, hopeful future. Well, look, Bush got, got a bum rap, I think, mm -hmm. for uh, allegedly yep. not uh, being involved in the, in the peace process early. Uh, he sh I think he should have looked busy, but, but I think he had a strategy. But the, que but the question yeah. now, he is now engaged. The question is one about the Palestinians. What is the character of the Palestinian people? Are they capable of getting a state and living at peace with Israel, or are they, do they have a culture of suicide? Well, it's going to take a leader that's going to have to change them a lot. And, and the new leader will have to, one, um, make a deal with the Israelis, an agreement on, a, on an independent Palestinian state, a, a deal that Arafat could have had but turned it down, and then be willing to sell that to the Palestinian people. It's going to take an act of great and powerful leadership. Well, and, and Arafat has poisoned the well. Okay, coming up on the Beltway, boys, uh, our campaign ups and downs and a closer look at the role of evangelical voters on Tuesday. Bye. two mortgage payments, one for your first mortgage and one for a high interest second mortgage? Would you like to combine the two by refinancing to a new low rate and end up with one low monthly payment? Just log on or call Ditech.com and apply for Ditech's flat fee home loan with no points. The total lender fee is just $395. There are no broker fees or no middleman commissions. Do it now before the rates go up. Ditech.com. Log on or call 1-800-DITECH-1. Delphi's thermal systems help keep this Maserati cool in the cockpit and under the hood. And now, that same technology is being served up in a completely different high-tech environment. Singular's All Over Network, with the largest digital voice and data coverage in America. Thanks to Singular and AT&T Wireless joining forces. Welcome to the new Singular. We're raising the bar. Welcome back to the Beltway, boys. Let's take a look at the ups and downs in the campaign. First up, Bush campaign manager Ken Melman. Well, he did a fantastic job of, of organizing. The, the Democratic 527s and the Democratic parties in, you know, in the Kerry campaign together did okay. I mean, they, 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 they held their vote and they turned it out. But Melman and company uh, supercharged the system and they, and they overwhelmed the, 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 the Democrats. I mean, the, the whole Melman idea was that, that a voter is, uh, uh, is more influenced by having somebody he knows, a volunteer, yeah. come to the door uh, instead of some paid uh, person that, he, that he's never met before. Also, the strategy, uh, the rogue strategy was right in that uh, this was not just a, uh, uh, a referendum by President Bush. It was a comparison between two candidates, and whacking Kerry was the right thing to do. You know, for me, credibility is everything, and Ken Melman, Ken Melman had a lot of credibility. Everything he told me uh, turned out to be true, how many volunteers they'd had, what they were doing, and on election day, he was the first guy to... That to tell me the exit polls all wrong, and of course he was right about that too. Right down, Democratic National Committee Chairman Terry McAuliffe. <laughs> yeah, he, I mean, he really is a loser. I mean, uh, uh, look, w w while he's been National Chairman, I mean, one thing has happened: the Democratic Party has lost. And and then when you when you talk about credibility, I mean, when you see him on television being interviewed, he has none, zero, zip. Yeah, well, he, he uh, by comparison to the, a very dignified Ed Gillespie, mm -hmm. uh, the Republican chairman, uh, 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 McCall did tend to be a loudmouth. On the other hand, he did raise a lot of money. Down, John Edwards. 
Well, first, uh, let us say a prayer for, for uh, uh, Elizabeth Edwards, mm -hmm. who has been diagnosed with breast cancer. But as to her husband, I mean, he delivered a, a, uh, a sort of a pyrotechnic, angry populist uh, acceptance speech in contrast to the okay. dignified one that John Kerry uh, delivered. Mm -hmm. uh, that was his opening shot for 2008. Mm -hmm. Sorry, buddy, you're behind yeah. Hillary Clinton. Here's the test. George Bush won North Carolina by 13 points in 2000. John Edwards State. John Edwards is on the ticket. Bush wins North Carolina by 13 percent. <laughs> okay. Republican up. Republican uh, Senator George Allen of Virginia, chairman of the National Republican Senatorial Committee. Well, he was obviously extremely accept, uh, successful as uh, head of their campaign committee, picking up four seats, knocking off Tom Daschle. Big. Republicans loved it. It made the, uh, their victory even sweeter. Uh, he's a guy who is very politically gifted, I think. You know, he's one of the few people in Virginia I know wears cowboy boots, uh, but then he's from California originally. Uh, I think he has a future. I think he does want to run for president. And, uh, and, and, and for me, the test is this, in, in his case, when he goes to athletic events, in Virginia and elsewhere, he's cheered, not booed. Most politicians are booed. That's I his, name is, his name is George Allen. That helps. Yeah, I do. Football coach of the yeah. Redskins, uh, who's fought with his father. Now, uh, I think John Corzine, his Democratic counterpart, actually did a pretty good job of recruiting mm -hmm. candidates. They, they had, the Democrats mm -hmm. had great candidates in all those states. The problem was they were all red states, <laughs> and they got redder and redder as it went on, and, and they couldn't overcome that. Down, gay marriage. Well, you know, this country is in fact getting much more tolerant toward gays uh, as, as the years go by. But, but the, the Massachusetts Supreme Court did, and the, and the, and the mayor of uh, San Francisco did this process a terrible disservice by jumping the process, trying to force it on, uh, on the public, and, uh, the, and there was a huge backlash that ultimately helped Bush. Yeah, it did help Bush, yeah, no question about that. But look, Mort, uh, voting to protect traditional marriage between a man and a woman is not a vote for intolerance, it's not a vote for bigotry. Uh, it's a vote for what uh, civilizations have uh, handed down to American other countries for thousands of years now. Morty, it's as simple as that. Some, some, uh, some people mean, the who are against are bigots. The votes, well, uh, I mean, that's true, of course, some, but not most. 86% voted uh, against gay marriage in Mississippi, all the way down to a very liberal state, Oregon, 57%. 60 plus in Ohio and Michigan, so okay. you got the drift. Up evangelical voters. Y you know, evangelical voters mattered a lot, but you know what mattered more? What mattered more were the moral issues that appealed not only to evangelical voters, of which there are a lot, but to the mass of voters, including a lot of Democratic voters. It's the issues, conservative moral issues that really matter, whether it's uh, the issue of the sanctity of life or protecting the family or protecting marriage or uh, many other ones. Those are very popular with people, not only evangelicals. You know, uh, there lo this is a problem for liberals. Most liberals that I know think that evangelicals are, are, are bigots. Liberals are supposed mm -hmm. to be liberal-minded. Yeah. In fact, the liberals are the bigots. I mean, they yeah. just have an automatic uh, negative reaction toward evangelicals. My advice to them is go to church. It's a public place. Go see what happens there. It, it's not, it's, it, you know, there aren't uh, clan sheets in the closet, you know. It's all about love and forgiveness and that kind of stuff. Indeed. Down, rapper P. Diddy and the youth vote. But, you know, there are two ways to look at the youth vote. I mean, the, the size of it, uh, as a proportion of the of the voting population stayed exactly the same as it yeah. was in 2000 right. so there was no increase there p diddy was supposed to bring it out but in fact since the whole of the electorate got much bigger the there actually was an increase in the in the in the number of, of young voters and they went more for Kerry than they did for yeah. for, yeah. for uh for gore more that was lame the truth <laughs> is it was demeaning to young people 18 to 29 for the media in particular to think that somehow uh, they were waiting for advice from Bruce Springsteen and Michael Stipe and Eddie Vedder and all those people to tell them how to vote. Eminem. M M yeah. Eminem. Yeah. 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 Another good example. That they, weren't, they weren't waiting M for that. Eminem helped Bush and so did Pete Eddie. Up, Majority Leader Tom DeLay, your yeah. great hero. Yeah, he is Mr. Realignment along with Bush. I mean, look, the, the Texas delegation, here's all you need to know. The Texas delegation before the delay reapportionment down in Texas was 17 Democrats to 15 Republicans. Well, once he realigned the state, or reapportioned the state, uh, um, Ralph Hall switched, so it was 16-16, then another Democrat dropped out, uh, then he knocked off four incumbents, uh, that's a pickup of six Republicans. Uh, that, uh, that's a big deal for Tom DeLay. Memo to political reformers, fight gerrymandering and use the referendum process uh, in the states where it's allowed. Yeah, but Democrats like it in the states they control. Uh, all right, coming up, more ups and downs, including how old Europe will fare with Bush returning to the White House.
notice it. You won't notice anything else. The FX from Infinity. All across America, Pfizer scientists are discovering breakthrough medicines. In this room, heart disease. Over there, diabetes. But our commitments don't end in the lab. That's why we started Pfizer Helpful Answers. Regardless of age or income, anyone without prescription drug coverage will save. Many can reduce their prescription costs by more than one-third. And those most in need get their Pfizer medicines for free. Pfizer, working to keep America healthy. Panasonic introduces high-definition plasma TV with the most beautiful picture in the world. Yours. The most beautiful picture. I'm pretty sure it's mine. Just snap and share your pictures instantly with built-in photo viewer. It's a whole new generation of high-definition plasma TV from Panasonic. Call for your free HD plasma guide now. Panasonic. Ideas for life. Rocket-powered i710 from Nextel. GPS-enabled for voice-guided direction, color screen, speakerphone, and a walkie-talkie that connects coast-to-coast -coast in under a second. For a limited time, buy one, get one free. Call 8888-NEXTEL to shop or find a store. Act now. Buy one i710, get one free. Call 8888-NEXTEL now. There's a genesis unfolding. A brave new world emerging. On November 7th, witness the epic event that will forever change the face of professional wrestling. TNA Wrestling presents Victory Road, a brave new world is coming. Sunday, November 7th, on Dish On Demand. A message from the law offices of James Sokolov on mesothelioma. Mesothelioma is a rare malignant type of cancer in the lungs usually associated with exposure to asbestos. If you or a loved one of them diagnosed with mesothelioma, call the law offices of James Sokolov at 1-800-821-5491. That's 1-800-821-5491. Welcome back to the Beltway, boys. We're continuing to look at more election ups and downs. Down, lawyers and the endless chatter about an overtime election. You know, I apologize to viewers for any of this chatter that we indulged in. And we were, we didn't do a lot, but don't we did do some. I mean, the lawyers, they could serve no good purpose in this election except shut it down and have another 36 days. I'm glad they didn't have that opportunity. Uh, well, absolutely, except that the lawyers in the Kerry campaign, as I understand it, wanted Kerry to fight the, uh, the Ohio results. Kerry... Thankfully, uh, I didn't do it. The, the lawyers were, were a pernicious influence. Up, oh, Florida Senator-elect Republican Mel Martinez. Well, now there will be two uh, Hispanic senators with Ken Salazar, who got elected in, in, in Colorado. Uh, now, what's important is that, uh, that President Bush increased his percentage of the, of the uh, Hispanic vote mm -hmm. from 35% last mm -hmm. time to 40% this time. That has big implications for the future mm -hmm. of, of politics. It does. So much more for the emerging Democratic majority. Down old Europe, you know, <laughs> old Europe. I mean, they still haven't gotten it about. I mean, the headlines in the uh, in, in, in European papers were shock and awe that Bush had won re-election. They can't take it. You know, they better uh, get with the program because uh, they need Bush a lot more than he needs them. I mean, France, Germany, and those countries. Yeah, the the, the headline in the one uh, London paper was, "How can 59 million people be so dumb?" Yeah. I mean, that's the, that, that's. And the they term. believe that. Right. Memo memo to old Europe. Get used to it. Yeah. Memo to President Bush. Uh, reach out, pretend to be uh, conciliatory, yeah, yeah, uh, to, and yeah. be conciliatory to the extent you can. Yeah, there's nothing to lose by uh, uh, pretending. Right. Yeah. Down, the mainstream media. Well, you know, I think the big losers in this campaign were CBS and, 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 and the New York Times, mm -hmm. which uh, uh, we won't, don't have to get into in detail. The, the big winners were, in no particular order, uh, the, the blogs, yeah. uh, weblogs, mm -hmm. uh, John Stewart of mm -hmm. The Daily Show, and Fox News. Yeah, well, that's true. You know, they, we now have a nation of bloggers, fact checkers, all of it, fact checking, and, and a lot of them are conservatives, fact checking all this stuff in the liberal media. The guy that typed up one of those CBS documents on his computer and put it over uh, the CBS document showing immediately that that was a fraudulent document, didn't come from 30 years ago, had been typed on a uh, 
uh, a computer more recently. Uh, he revolutionized the media. He it, it was a guy whose website is a little green CBS, footballs, CBS, by the way. CBS can redeem itself no. if it does. Wait a minute. No. If it does. Wait a minute. If it does <laughs> this, gone. if it's a fair analysis, yeah. and, and I believe yeah. it will be a fair analysis of how yeah. this all happened, and the right, the yeah. right people uh, are are held accountable. Yeah, and who would that be? Well, probably Dan Rather. I agree. The buzz is up next. Don't go away. Is the IRS ruining your life? Are IRS penalties and interest compounding daily? Stop the cycle now. Hello, I'm John Harris, president of J.K. Harris & Company, the nation's largest tax representation firm. Our former IRS agents have over 500 years of experience inside the IRS. They know how to settle your IRS debt for pennies on the dollar. Call the IRS experts at J.K. Harris now for your free confidential tax settlement analysis. Call 1-800-249-9947. At 7.42 a.m., critical samples arrived at this pharmaceutical lab. At 9.34 a.m., a trade proposal arrived at the National Congress in Brazil. At 10.27 a.m., a birthday present arrived, as promised. Who made all of these things happen? The company that delivers more packages on time than anyone. UPS. What can Brown do for you? That's me. And this is Kate. She's just like me. First bike ride, first prom. Then my little girl grew up. Around then, I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. Still, things were looking up. Until I turned 50. I felt 90. For some, there's Remicade. Remicade relieves the pain of RA and helps stop further damage to your joints. Your doctor may add Remicade if you're on methotrexate already and not responding well. Remicade is not for everyone. Many people with heart failure shouldn't take Remicade. Remicade can lower resistance to infection. Your doctor should assess your risk of infection and you should alert your doctor to any signs such as fever, fatigue, cough, or the flu. Serious events some fatal have been reported with Remicade, including infections such as tuberculosis and blood disorders. Nervous system disorders have also occurred. Remicade infusions may cause serious allergic reactions, including hives, trouble breathing, and low blood pressure. Call today and talk to your rheumatologist. Last year, Kate was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis, and she's so young. At least she won't suffer like I did. North Africa, 1942. From Cairo to Casablanca, it was a land of intrigue, espionage, and brutal war. Allied and Axis powers clashed in a deadly battle of brilliant strategies and massive casualties. The Desert War on the next War Stories with Oliver North with the 4th Infantry in Iraq. Fox News Channel's acclaimed series, War Stories with Oliver North, is now available on videotape. Call now, 1-800-933-0760. That's 1-800-933-0760. It's the buzz, Fred. As you know, Mort, this is a no-gloat zone. <laughs> uh, but just in case uh, you were wondering, here's how our predictions panned out last week. Now, this is just for accountability purposes. You'll understand that, I'm sure. Okay, here's what we call for the popular vote. Not bad, huh? And the electoral vote, we were dead on. And here's what we predicted for the Senate. We were off by one. I told you I that know, Ken, Ken, know, Ken Salazar I know, I, was, was going to carry, carry California. I know. Listen to me. You wanted Colorado, but you wanted to switch. I know, and you were right. Okay. Same thing for the House, which we saw up there. We were very close on it, too. So, not yeah, bad. Not, not, not bad. bad. Not, just for accountability. Yes, I know. Yeah. And there was a, a little luck factor in here. Okay. Uh, the other buzz is, look, I, President Bush uh, is going to go ahead with Social Security reform, but that is nowhere near as big a problem as the Medicare and Medicaid problem. Mm -hmm. That is what really needs attention. Yeah. The, the Congressional Budget Office says that by the year 2050, which is a seems a long way away, but it's not mm -hmm. that far, the, the, uh, those two programs, those two health programs, will account for 27% of the U.S. economy. Right now, mm -hmm. the entire federal government, including mm -hmm. defense and everything else, accounts for 20% of the economy. They have to mm -hmm. be reformed, and I don't mm -hmm. see it on Bush's agenda. You know, I have a couple of unsung heroes of the campaign. You know who the unsung hero for, uh, for Kerry was really helping? David Kay, the inspector who said no WMD in Iraq for Bush. John O'Neill of the Swift Boat Veterans for Truth. He, uh, he hurt Kerry badly with his uh, book. I actually think yeah. that Joe Lockhart's arrival as a as a Kerry uh, spokesman was actually very good. Yeah. You, were, you were talking about credibility. Yeah. When I talked to Lockhart, actually, I got I got straight dough. Yeah. A lot of the other uh, uh, Kerry campaigners were were mm -hmm. all about spin, but when you called Lockhart, you got you got pretty pretty straight dough.
Good. Okay, that's all the time for the Beltway Boys for this week. Watch us on Special Report with our buddy Britt Hume weekday evenings at 6 o'clock. And join us next week when the boys will be back in town.